Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And we are following breaking news this morning out of St. Petersburg, Russia. That is where at least 10 people are dead this afternoon and dozens are injured after an explosion in a metro station. That train was traveling from one station to the other. Russian President Vladimir Putin was in the city at the time of the explosion and expressed his condolences to the family of those killed and injured shortly before news broke that a second device had been found. An exact cause has not yet been released, but the Interfax News Agency quoted an unnamed source as saying one of the blasts was caused by a bomb filled with shrapnel. All metro stations across the city remain closed. We're also following breaking news back here at home. That's where a fatal shooting investigation is underway on Detroit's east side. We're told that shooting happened on Russell Street in the area of I-75 in Nevada. Police are still gathering information right now. Of course, we'll keep you updated on the air and online at clickondetroit.com. Topping our news this afternoon, an act of heroism. Two Good Samaritans were badly hurt while trying to save victims from a car crash. This happened along the Jeffries Freeway here in the city of Detroit. Local 4's Coco McAvoy is joining us live now at U of D Jesuit, where one of the victims is a student. Coco, is there an update on how the victims are doing this afternoon? Yes, Evrod, police have identified the doctor who stepped in to help as 47 year old Cynthia Ray. Ray is a doctor at Henry Ford Hospital and she's still in critical condition. The other Good Samaritan, 17 year old Sean English, who is a student here at U of D Jesuit, is also in critical condition and staff members here say he is fighting for his life. And just an all around great young man. He's actually running for student senate. An outpouring of support at U of D Jesuit High School this morning as people gathered to pray for 17 year old student Sean English. English was one of the Good Samaritans who stepped in to help after a Jeep with six teens in it rolled over on I-96 yesterday morning. English was with his parents who also got out of their car to help but were not critically injured. 47-year-old Cynthia Ray, a doctor at Henry Ford Hospital, also got out of her car to help but was critically injured. This after the Good Samaritans were hit by another driver, allegedly a 17-year-old boy. Police say evidence at the scene indicates the 17-year-old may have been drinking. Staff at U of D Jesuit High School described Sean English as a wonderful young man who had dreams of running cross country in college. All that I know is that his parents said this would be a very long road. There would be several surgeries I know coming up because he was really, the lower body was really, really hurt. Yeah, I, I can't imagine um, how Sean will feel once he, he's aware of what's going on, but uh, his parents, again, I was so impressed with how grateful they were uh, that their son was still here and, and they're going to work hard to help him recover and get back. And he will. He's a great, tough kid. And it is important to note that family members of the 17 year old driver say he was not drinking at the time of the crash. And we did check in with police on that issue. They say they have not ruled that out yet because they are waiting on toxicology results. Reporting live this afternoon, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. So incredibly sad, hurt and now hospitalized doing the right thing. Coco, uh, when you're in the hospital for that long, we all know that the medical expenses can really add up. Is there any way that our viewers at home can help? Yes, so friends and family of Sean English, they have created a GoFundMe page, and we will make sure to put that link on our website. Click on Detroit.com. All righty, Coco McAvoy reporting live for us this afternoon. Coco, thank you for the update. Well, as you take a live look outside from Coco there, we didn't see any umbrellas. We didn't see any rain coming down. But, Paul, we understand that we are in for a bit of rain this week. Yeah, it's going to rain pretty much all the way through Thursday. Well, not all the way. There'll be times where it's not raining, but we have rain chances all the way through Thursday, and I'll detail that for you in the detailed forecast in about 10, 15 minutes. But look at the temps. This is kind of topsy-turvy. Coolest temps are to the south. You have the east wind coming off of Lake Erie. Plus, you've had the showers first. That kept you cooler. Then you get to the north where you haven't had the showers yet. You're in the mid-50s. So we're going from mid-40s in Monroe to mid-50s up along the I-69 corridor there from Port Huron over to Lapeer over to Flint. Here's the rain, and what we have is very light and scattered. A lot of this isn't reaching the ground. Some of it is, so it's enough in some spots where you would need a, uh, an umbrella. But notice there's a break behind it. Once that break is through, we'll be okay for a while. But now let's take a look at the computer model. By 6 o'clock, showers returning, and look at how quickly this ramps up. 
this evening. This is just till 10 o'clock tonight. So we're going to talk more about that coming up again in about 10, 15 minutes. But for the afternoon, we have the showers in the area for the next hour or two. Then a bit of a break. The rain returning by late afternoon. Temps reaching the upper 50s. We'll also talk about opening day coming up. And don't forget, if you're at work, you just kind of want to keep tabs on the rain. Our free local forecasters app has one of the best radars you're ever going to see. You can zoom it to anything you want and you can download it for free. Just search the uh, app store for WDIV. Be back in a few, Everod. All righty, Paul will be checking in with you in just a little bit. New at noon, Detroit police are investigating the fatal stabbing that happened overnight. Investigators say a 51 year old man had been stabbed in the chest and showed up at his girlfriend's house on Leisure Street near Schaefer and West Outer Drive. She took him to the hospital and that is where he died, sadly. The victim's name has not been released just yet, but it's also unknown where that stabbing initially took place. And now to Pittsfield Township, where police say a man was found shot to death in a car overnight, but he actually might have been shot at a different location. Officers found the man in the car on Dalton Avenue between Washtenaw and Central in Pittsfield Township. They say the victim was a 19 year old man from Ann Arbor. Investigators believe that he was shot somewhere else and then drove away until he stopped at the spot where this car was found. Traffic was blocked for several hours while investigators worked the scene trying to figure out exactly what happened. Well, it's a pretty wild scene at the emergency room of Henry Ford Hospital Wyandotte overnight when a car smashed right into the emergency room doors. Fortunately, no one was hurt when that car crashed into the building shortly after midnight. Several officers were needed to control the driver. Investigators hope to find out if that 30 year old from Lincoln Park was under the influence of drugs or alcohol. And right now, police are investigating after a 17 year old boy is shot in the head in southwest Detroit. This happened on Beatrice near Visgar. The teen was inside of an SUV when someone fired shots into the vehicle. He was rushed to the hospital by the driver of that vehicle that he was in. He is now listed in serious condition. Well, police are searching for the person who shot a nine year old boy in the head on in southwest Detroit or in West Detroit. On Saturday, Malik Cozy and two other children were sitting inside of a car when someone fired those shots. The three children were waiting to go to the movies with their grandmother. Malik was hit in the head. The other kids were not hit, both of them. He is listed in critical condition. And right now, police are looking for a silver or gray Dodge Magnum with tinted windows that they believe is involved. In less than one hour, one of six people arrested in a police raid on an alleged sex trafficking operation is due to appear in federal court. Jeanette Gago worked as a clerk at the Victory Inn Motel on Michigan Avenue near Wyoming at the Detroit and Dearborn city limits. She's facing sex trafficking and several drug charges and has a detention hearing today. Five men are also charged in this case. The motel was shut down and locked up after those police raids. Well, Detroit's big three automakers have released reports on sales in the month of March. General Motors was the only auto company reporting an increase with overall sales up 2% in March compared to last year. GM reported strong sales of crossover vehicles last month, while Fiat Chrysler automobiles saw sales drop 5%. Dodge brand sales were up, but overall car sales were down and Ford sales dropped 7 percent in March. Car sales dropped dramatically when F series pickup sales increased. All right, coming up here on Local 4 News at noon. So you said you're only at two? Yeah. Okay, what was the beer, liquor, uh, wine? Uh, that is a Detroit Piston caught drinking and driving. And this is newly released dash cam video that shows the sobriety test that he underwent and shows how he reacted to the police officers who pulled him over. Plus, we're hearing from a survivor of that fatal carbon monoxide poisoning at a Niles Hotel for the very first time. Also, is Judge Neil Gorsuch a go? Today is the day that we might get a new Supreme Court justice with voting underway. That more when we come right back. For the best... Welcome back, everyone. Detroit Piston star Contavious Caldwell Pope was arrested last Wednesday on suspicion of drunk driving. And now we have the dash cam video from that arrest. Take a look. So how much have you had tonight? Not much. Okay. I mean, I have maybe two in you know, just water. Two in water? Yeah. Okay. You might remember Pope was reportedly very cooperative with officers, but was issued a ticket for a DUI after a breathalyzer confirmed his blood alcohol level was just over the legal limit. It was actually at 0.08. Pope was originally pulled over for going 45 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone. 
Today we're finally hearing from a survivor now after a broken heat hotel pool heater killed a teenager. This happened Saturday at the Quality Inn Hotel in the city of Niles, Michigan, which is located in the southwest part of our state. Staff called 911 after they discovered six children unconscious on the pool deck. Police say the water, the heater had malfunctioned and caused that carbon monoxide leak. Officials say the children ages 12 to 14 were poisoned and a 13 year old was killed. The survivor shared his story with us. All in the pool. The pool is really cold. And like I got out really fast. And um, all I remember is me just passing out and hitting my head. Investigators say there was not a carbon monoxide detector in the pool area. The Senate Judiciary Committee is voting right now on the president's pick for the Supreme Court. Committee members are voting on the nomination of Judge Neil Gorsuch to fill the seat of Justice Antonin Scalia, who you might remember died last year. At this point, it's unclear if Gorsuch will reach the 60 votes that are needed for confirmation. Of course, we'll keep you updated on the latest on air and online at clickondetroit.com. Some bad news for drivers this afternoon. If your gas tank is running pretty low today, get ready to pay a lot more. AAA Michigan is reporting gas prices statewide have increased 15 cents in the past week. The current price of regular unleaded gasoline, $2.45 per gallon, which is more than last week's average of $2.30 a gallon, about 36 cents more than this same time last year. Experts say the drivers should expect to see prices continue to rise as suppliers are making the switch to the more expensive summer blend. Let's talk cars. Ford recalling 52,000 pickup trucks because the vehicles could move while in park. The recall covers about uh, F F-250 trucks built between October of 2015 and as recently as this month. Ford has said that it's not aware of any accidents or injuries related to this defect, but the company is advising owners of the 6.2 liter models of the F-250 to use their parking brake at all times to keep that vehicle from moving. All right, still ahead here at noon, looking for a cure. A little boy living most of his 20 month life in the hospital with no answers, but he and his family are not giving up hope. Paul? Well, Everard, the rain, rain just will not go away. We've had too much rain over the past week. We have more on the way. There's reinforcements behind that. And then we need to talk about opening day. I'll have all the details just ahead. Parents pay attention. The number of child pornography cases is on the rise. Is your child at risk of being tricked by a predator? My daughter kind of thinks uh, Facebook is kind of outdated, but she still tweets and Instagrams, and I'm, I'm telling her constantly, you know, be mindful of what you put out there. Local adults pretending to be teens pursuing sexual selfies from minors. And people who do that kind of thing tend to do it over and over and over again. The defenders expose their disturbing deceptions so that you can protect your children tonight at 11. Introduce. All right, welcome back, everybody. Baseball is back as the Tigers are taking on the White Sox today to kick off the season. But Mother Nature has some other plans, Paul. Yeah, this is uh, getting a little dicey. Uh, the models are showing that it's going to be, well, it's been kind of showery in the Chicago area, but it's going to get showerier and showerier, if that's such a word. Right. And uh, the first pitch is at 410 this afternoon, so this is getting a little dicey out there. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. Well, we are keeping our eyes on the skies, yeah. in fact. Uh, we do want to remind you, opening day in Detroit is this Friday. We're going to be live from Comerica Park on Local 4 News today, starting at 4.30 a.m. But we are keeping our eyes uh, on the weather over there in Chicago, hoping that the game will go on. On, Paul. Yep, let's take a look at that radar right now, Everod, and uh, you can see we've got uh, some scattered showers that have gone through the area, but notice how to the south things are just kind of increasing and, and expanding. That's going to be a process that's going to continue through the afternoon for us too, but we'll get it later than them. So this game is very much in doubt today. We'll have to see how the heaviest bands set up and where they are. Uh, temperatures right now in many areas are actually 50 or so, but as I showed you at the top of the show, the warmest temperatures are actually the northern part of the area because you haven't had the rain yet. So basically it's actually low to mid 50s to the north and upper 40s to near 50 to the south. All right, right now, 
massive. We showed you on Local 4 News today earlier this morning, uh, an incredible amount of damage from severe storms and tornadoes to the south. That threat continues all the way into Georgia this afternoon. The severe weather will not get us, but as this low pressure wraps up and comes our way, we're going to get wet and we don't need any more rain. The ground is already pretty well soaked. So here's the batch of showers going through right now. This is very light, nothing violent, just a batch of showers coming through. Then there's a break and then I'm going to show you what's going to happen next. So by four o'clock, the batch of showers going through now is in our north zone. And then watch what happens by 10 o'clock tonight. Pounding rain, maybe even some thunder and lightning. The low goes through. We get into a scattered shower pattern early tomorrow. Maybe not a whole lot, but still maybe a few around. That continues through the day in terms of a diminishing trend. And just when you thought it was safe to come out of the house, look at this. Another storm coming in. Looks like now it's going to hold off until either Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday night. The models aren't totally clear. This model's holding it off till Wednesday night. That's another soaking rain. So we're not done with this stuff yet. So this afternoon, as I mentioned, just scattered light showers, about 58 or so for the high. And then tonight, the pounding rain comes in, especially the first half of the night with some thunder and lightning, possible upper 40s for the low. And basically, again, it's going to be wet or mostly wet through Friday. Again, we may hold off the rain for a while on Wednesday, but it's going to be starting tomorrow afternoon windy all the way through Friday. The weekend is looking really, really nice, but opening day right now. Well, let's talk about opening day. I've rod. Whoop, let's hit that one more time. There we go. And oh, it went away. Anyhow, opening day is going to be breezy and cold. It's going to be windy in the afternoon, maybe some flakes. <laughs> And some snow and some raindrops early in the day, but temps only in the 40s. Man, oh man. All right, Paul, thank you. Uh, for months, we have been following the story of Elliot Carter. He is the little 20 month old with a disease that prevents him from really eating anything, and no one's found a cure for it just yet. Finding answers has been a long and, and very difficult journey for the family with no end in sight. But outside of an answer, there's been so much good. Community fundraisers, basketball games, book drives, and even international attention bringing awareness. So to get an update on Elliot and to highlight all the good that's been happening in his life, join our Nick Monticelli on Local 4's Facebook page. It's for a special webcast and Facebook Live at 1230. We're going to debut the extended cut of Elliot's story and chat live with Elliot's mom, one of Elliot's specialists, and some of those that are doing amazing things to support this family. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Again, that is at 1230 right after this newscast on our website, clickondetroit.com, and on, on the Local 4 Facebook page. Still ahead? Got my horn back. Oh, and you can see he is all smiles. We're talking about using social media for good. How a Local 4 viewer helped reunite a local man with his beloved trumpet. Replay song. Well, finally here at noon, a Local 4 viewer helped reunite a man with a treasured family heirloom that was mistakenly donated. Yeah, Chris French was frantically searching for his trumpet, posting videos and pleas all over Facebook to track down this instrument. His mother died last week, and his military family chose to donate her belongings to the Salvation Army down in Trenton. And as workers unloaded the items from the truck, they accidentally took his trumpet. Alan Stone was watching our report and realized that he had the instrument. <laughs> I, I am thrilled. It's, it's something that you always wish in your life that you give back to somebody. And he was overwhelmed to get it back. Chris French was grateful to have the trumpet that his father worked hard for return back to him. And you can see how emotional he got being able to to see it again, thinking that he would never get it. Yeah, you know, an important lesson there too. you know, discuss with your children about the important family heirloom stuff, the pictures and things like that. Make sure people know where they are, what they are. And then, you know, when the time comes, they yeah, yeah. we got some good people out there. Sure. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.